First of all, congratulations for making it so far to year four. I'm Kuo. I'm Linda. I'm Jacob. And we're here to talk to you about resilience. So first of all, what is the definition of resilience? Resilience doesn't mean that there's no stress in your life. Resilience means you're able to respond to stress in a healthy way so that it's like a bouncing back from stress and stressful conditions then actually allow you to grow. As you recall, in year one and two, we talk a lot about mindfulness and reflective journaling. We believe that those are really, really good tools that you can use in your clinical practice to deal with resilience. One of the concepts that we introduced to you in year one and two is the difference between respond and reaction. If you recall, reaction means that when you have an emotion, the emotion actually becomes the whole of you. Where else? Response is being present and mindful when you are aware that there is this emotion in you. But the emotion is actually not all of you. That would help you to step back when you're being triggered and choose to respond instead of react. So Kwame has already talked about mindfulness and reflection, things that you're familiar with, we've done already. But we're just going to um, talk about a few other things that might give you some strategies to think about. The first one, we're going to mention is your inner thermometer. So before you can actually bring into your life any strategies for being resilient, you have to have an awareness of your own stress. So most of us when we get very busy ignore our bodies and we don't sense that we're getting stressed until it's, it's too late. So what you can do is to be aware of your heart rate to pay notice to how your body is responding. Are you sweating? Are they cold sweat? And generally, how are you feeling in your body? Those are the markers that you can use to check into yourself where you are at. As we all know, but it's important, that's why we're mentioning it again, but you would actually have to put that into action. That is to support yourself with people that can support you. It needs work. As you all know, friendship doesn't just happen over the night. You need to keep in touch with people, make social contact, to feel that yourself is being supported, especially at the moment when you feel really stressed clinically. Moving on from that, we can think about the social support that you might have in the clinical setting. So look for role models and mentors in the places where you're working. Have a look at the things that they do, the, the strategies they use to cope with some of the stresses that you see. Talk to them, see what works for them and then you can adapt things that might work for you. So when you get into the clinical setting, start noticing observing what people are doing and connect with those people that you think that you can learn from that you think that could inspire you and approach them and ask them to give you support as busy as your clinical life might be it is important to have some me time when the focus is about yourself and taking care of yourself. May it be just a cup of coffee, a walk along the beach or the park, whatever it might be. 
And sometimes the me time might be something you can implement in your work day. It doesn't mean necessarily going away from your clinical environment, but just removing yourself from the situation for a little while. It's also really important to know your limits. In the medical world, there are lots of uncertainties and there will be things that are new and, and you're a little bit unsure about. Don't be frightened to actually have a perception that you're not sure of things. We told you about uncertainty starting from year one. We know you all want to reach out to the sky because you're high achievers. But we would like you to take stock and always think about what is your limitation. And honestly, we keep telling you again and again, it is actually okay to fail. What we're going to talk about now is something that we all know, but we actually need to work out how to do it properly. That means eating in a healthy way, sleeping when you need it, good night's sleep, good sleep hygiene so that you get good rest, and of course, exercise. Those are all important things, those are the things that we tell our patient to do. So it's important for us to think about how do we do all that so that it can increase our ability to deal with the challenges in, challenges in clinical world. And that brings us to our last point, that some of the things we've mentioned seem quite logical, they seem quite easy, but then why is it so difficult to do in practice? So it's really important to make a plan almost before you get into a stressful uh, position at work. To have that plan, to think about what other things that you could do, it could be as simple as just reminding yourself always to record three happy things that happen during the day. It's all about taking care of yourself, having the ways to achieve that. And again, take notice, find people in your workplace that can be part of your skill set. Somebody you can turn to if you need to reflect with someone else, if you just need to talk to someone. These are all things that you can think about in advance. Thank you for your time and attention. Here we are at the end of it. Having said that, just remember, we are always just a phone call away. I would suppose this is a phone. Or you can just send us an email when you need some support. I'm Kong. I'm Linda. And I'm Jacob. Here we are from Griffith to you. Don't be a stranger.